Good afternoon. Can you hear me in the back? Great. Uh, so to introduce myself, I'm John Kleeman, and I'm the founder and one of the directors of Question Mark, the assessment management system company. And I'm going to be talking to you this afternoon about Beyond Recall, taking competency assessments to the next level. So could this happen in your organization? I heard somebody actually told me this once that they said their compliance training was so boring that they paid the kids some pocket money to page turn through it and answer the questions. Now obviously you need to make your compliance training interesting but also if you're asking questions after compliance training to check people have understood it, they oughtn't to be questions that your employees' children could answer. They should need some <coughs> context from your organization. Uh, and that's what this presentation is about, that you should not just be asking recall type questions. Here's another thing, does this ever happen in your organization? Someone passed the course but can't do the job. Someone got 98% in the exam, doesn't have the skills needed to do the work. Obviously there can be lots and lots and lots of reasons for that, but one of them might be that you're asking questions that are just asking people to recall knowledge, recall facts, and not demonstrate their understanding of their job competence. So recall questions are really important. Uh, they do help us learn things and they do help reduce the forgetting curve. There's some pretty good psychological science out there which says that if you teach people some things and then get them to answer questions on it, practice retrieving it after the uh, after the training, uh, ideally a few times after the training, perhaps once immediately, once with a delay, then you will slow that forgetting curve and allow people to remember it. So recall questions are not all bad, but, can you still hear me fine at the back? But recall is only a small part of the job requirements. For most of you, most of all of us, in our daily work, uh, remembering things is important, but is not the most crucial attribute. So you may be familiar with this, and if not, uh, let me just walk you through it. This is the Bloom's taxonomy of uh, cognitive skills. So the bottom is remember, recall, sometimes called knowledge. Then there's understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. And the idea behind the taxonomy is that things get more complicated as you go higher up the, the tree. And most real world jobs require many levels of, of, of the taxonomy. If you think about what you personally are required to do, what people in your organization are required to do, <coughs> you probably need to do most things in, that, in that, le that level. And if your assessments focus only on recall and remembering facts, then they're not probably corresponding to the job competence. And since it's very easy to write knowledge questions and a bit harder to write the other questions, a lot of us tend to do that, but it's not the best practice. And to give an illustration, here's a recall question. What does a yellow traffic light mean? Stop, go, caution, look behind you. That's just a, a fact. You can uh, make that a bit of a better question by converting it into an understanding example. If you're driving towards an intersection and the light turns from yellow to red, what should you do? And that's the same kind of question, but it's actually uh, requiring some to understand, apply. And generally speaking, an understand question or an apply question is better than a, uh, just a, a recall remember question. And here's taking it a little bit further into an evaluate or judgment example, asking somebody to d deploy <coughs> their judge judgment. <coughs> so you're giving a friend, you're giving a friend a, a lift to work, and running late, and you see a yellow, <laughs> you see a yellow traffic light. <coughs> what should you do? Excuse me. So I'll let you just give you give you a moment to read the question. And as you can see, that there might be a multiple right answers here. Should you, should you, because you're running late, drive across the intersection? Should you stop hard and run the risk of the person behind you crashing into you? Should you move to the side of the road and let the other car pass? And there's some judgment involved here. And so these three different examples illustrate a recall example, an understand example, and a evaluate or judgment example. Thank you. So 
in the rest of this presentation, I'd like to just give you uh, three different angles on how you might assess high-level skills. There are lots of other ways as well. You could use um, simulations, you could use role plays. And by the way, if anybody wants a copy of these slides, I'd be more than happy to share them afterwards. Just uh, give me your details after the session, or I've got a few question mark colleagues uh, at the back, or our, our stand is just, just here. So one thing is that you can just write conventional questions to assess beyond recall. You can use multiple choice, like we've just seen, or you can use matching or other question types, and just ensure that high level cognition is required to get the right answer. If your work involves uh, practical tasks, maybe you're having salespeople go out in the field, you've got engineers maintaining machinery, you've got health workers, physiotherapists, or nurses doing practical tasks, then observational assessments are a great way to assess and they assess both high level uh, cognitive skills and also practical skills. And the last thing I'm going to cover is situational judgment assessments where you frame questions based on a dilemma and I'll explain this and they allow you to actually evaluate judgment and what course of action is taken. And uh, I hope that these uh, different ideas might help you go back and present a better assessment experience within your programs. So the important thing is, whatever you're doing, you want to make your assessments focus to the job. So one way of doing that is a job task analysis survey. You are subject matter experts. Do you do the task? How difficult is it? How important is it? And how frequently do you do it? And then you identify what you need to assess. And in a way, that's more important than anything else I'm saying this afternoon. Work out what it is that your job involves. And jobs vary a bit. Things have changed a lot over the last five or 10 years. What an assessment was right for in a job five years ago may not well not be right now. So you need to keep your uh, blueprint for your assessment, your understanding of what the job involves up to date. And a job task analysis can be a great way of doing that. But moving on to uh, writing questions to test higher order skills, I thought it could be useful to share some advice from some real experts. Um, Bill Coscarelli and Sharon Schrock have written probably the best book ever on testing, uh, uh, Criterion Reference Test Development. And if you haven't got a copy of this and you're involved in assessment development, I really recommend you get it. We have no commercial interest in it, but it's just very good practice. And what they have, they have said uh, is that knowledge, the recall level items, are by far the easiest to write. But if you're going to develop tests that truly reflect on the job performance, you need to write items at the higher cognitive levels. Uh, and what they say is that you shouldn't worry too much about the precise classification of, of test items, but just don't write them at the recall level. So don't worry if it's an understand question or an apply question or an analyze question. Just write a bar memorization and you will get a lot of uh, value in your testing program. Uh, and I think that that probably is the one, if you take one thing away from this session, I hope that might be it. Because all of our testing programs will be much, much better improved if we do more understand, apply, analyze, and less remember recall. It, it can be useful, although know, you can write a high levels questions that uh, use multiple choice. It's often very effective to use matrix or matching questions. You look at this example, for example, you need to know something about biology there. Yeah, aquatic mammal, I guess there are those because dolphins are probably aquatic mammals. But can you have a flat work with a skeleton, a single cell metazoa? You need to understand and be able to analyze your high level biology thoughts for that. I, I suddenly haven't got an, an idea. Another example question here, a scenario question about a plant being put in a pot and growing over two years. Uh, and working out some questions on that. You need to understand your plant biology for, for, for that. It's not something that you just recall one fact and get the question right. You need to uh, be able to understand and analyze. So these questions can definitely be written and they take a bit more work to write, but they're a lot more valuable if you, if you, if you, if you do that. And another side benefit is that if you use a more complicated question, then uh, they'll also be harder to guess. The multiple choice question, 25% chance of guessing if there's four options. 
in these questions, there's about a 3% chance of guessing. And although psych psychometrically you can deal with the guessing, it makes people feel that the assessment's much more valid if it's harder to guess. Makes sense so far? Getting some nods, thank you. So let's move on to observational assessments. So just to remind you of some of the assessments that are useful in competence measurement. Uh, the firstly, tests and exams, that's what a lot of organizations do. Uh, summative assessments, deliver questions, you score them, somebody passes or fails, and at the end of it you get feedback, uh, and usefully at the question level, telling you what questions you got right or wrong, at the topic level, tell you which areas you understand and don't understand, and then at the assessment level. Uh, then there's job task analysis, which we talked about, identifying what tasks people need to do. And then quizzes, often very useful during formative assessment, formative le uh, uh, during learning, so you helping reinforce learning, uh, give people practice, check their understanding. But, uh, but an observational assessment allows you to test a practical skill. Supposing an engineer has to go up and uh, change those light fittings up there, you want to make sure they can do that following the safety proceedings, that they uh, uh, do it right, hard to test that with a multiple choice or even a matching question. What you need to do is have somebody observe them, see if they follow the right safety protocols, switch off the electricity before changing it, that kind of thing, and that's better done with an observational assessment. And lastly, the surveys, course evaluation surveys, and other similar surveys to get attitudes and help you improve training. So observational assessments are used in sales training. So you send somebody out with a salesperson, see if they ask the right questions. They can be used in certification for practical skills. They're very widely used in the mental, the medical and dental area where they're often called OSCEs. So may, maybe, for example, you'd have a nurse take somebody's blood and somebody else will observe how well they do it. And also in equipment operation is somebody using machinery right. And what happens is an observer rates the participant, usually from some objective criteria, following through a checklist to make it as reliable as possible. And these are often done in smartphones, uh, tablets, also very widely used in the uh, fire and emergency services for checking people, people, people follow things. And we're seeing a lot of organizations use these, uh, uh, increasingly so. The typical workflow is an obse uh, observer or monitor logs in, uh, selects the assessment, selects the person to be observed, and then goes around with a smartphone or tablet, observing what they do and reporting the results to, to stakeholders. So for example, Paul, my colleague at the back there, could be uh, uh, running through a checklist of how well I'm doing this presentation. Did I introduce myself at the beginning? Uh, am I going slowly enough? Uh, or am I perhaps going too fast? Uh, have I covered the key ground he wants me to co cover? And then he could uh, rate, rate that and I would get the feedback, my manager would get the feedback, and it could also be correlated with our other assessments. So I'd really recommend you look at observational assessments if you have any kind of practical uh, tasks that your people need to do. So that's uh, two of the routes for testing higher level skills. I'd now like to move on to the uh, third, situational judgment assessments. And we've just this week uh, published a white paper on, on this, and it's a really exciting uh, way of delivering assessments. Let me try and share some of that excitement and share, share some of the knowledge. Firstly, why judgment matters, and this is a, a quote from an Ernst & Young paper, and as I said earlier, I'd be happy to share these slides and got, got, got that link in there. So rules are clearly immensely important. They define the parameters in which teams and individuals operate. Without rules, most of our organizations would not be able to function. Uh, but rules alone are not enough. Whether and how they're adopted by people and what happens when you get somewhere where the rules don't quite uh, deal with it or two rules seem to contradict. And it's when people are making decisions that really matters. So you can test people on the rules, but that's just not enough. Because judgment is needed to interpret the rules. And this is a lovely quote from Ernst & Young. Uh, judgment is at the heart of nearly every business scandal that ever occurred. And if you think about it, if you look at uh, all the various organizations that had big fines, or look at mistakes that you've made or your organization has made, almost certainly you'll find the judgment was at the heart of that. Somebody perhaps had good intentions, but made a bad, a bad judgment. So if you can assess judgment, then 
that's a very powerful tool. So a situational judgment assessment question has, has this structure. Firstly, you define a context, an environment that uh, the judgment needs to be made in. Then you present a dilemma, something that there isn't a clear right answer to. And often this involves softer skills, like how you're dealing with people. Uh, and then you, participant chooses from options, and a score evaluation is made. And the key thing is, this has to be a dilemma which is relevant to the job and which uh, there's a genuine judgment to be made. Here's an example, very simple SJA question, appropriate for judgment in retail. So you're working in a, in a retail store. You've been told to refill a lot of shelves before mid-morning, but a customer comes in and has broken a bottle of cooking oil. It's broken glass. Oil is quickly spreading across the floor. Customer seems upset. Other customers approach in the area. One of your colleagues is helping the customer. What should you do? So here, there are three options. Watch your colleague for a moment. Help your colleague deal with the situation by calling the cleaning staff and stay focused on completing your current task of refilling the shelves in time. So in most organizations, helping your colleague deal with the situation by calling the cleaning staff is the right answer here. But, uh, and if somebody watches their colleague, well, that's kind of neutral. But staying focused on completing their current task of refilling the shelves in most organizations wouldn't be the right answer. So this is just a very simple uh, judgment question for somebody uh, low, 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 down, low down the tree. Here, here's another question, uh, a little bit more, more complicated. You're working in the back office of a team approving new customers to ensure your organization's procedures have been followed. Your manager's away on holiday, and a senior manager comes in and says there's an important new customer, and they need to be approved today as they want to place a big order, and he can vouch the customer is good. But you review the, the customer details, and one piece of information required by your procedure is not present. You tell the senior manager, and he says, don't worry, I'm vouching for the customer. But, and you know this senior manager by reputation, and I heard they got a colleague fired a few months ago when she didn't do what he, what he asked. What's the most effective and least effective of the following options? Do you take the senior manager's word? Do you call your manager's cell phone and interrupt a holiday? Do you tell the manager you can't, can't approve it without the information? Do you ask the manager for sign written instructions? The right or the wrong answer might be slightly different in different organizations, but if you can uh, ask what the most effective and least effective will be, you're going to learn a lot about your organization and whether the person is doing the right job. And you can also ask this kind of question as a survey as well. So it might not be a right wrong. You might say, well, what is it that you think people in the organization would do? And that might identify compliance challenges you've got. But obviously, taking on a new customer without following your procedures, if you're a bank or another regulated organization, could be a very serious offense. And you can ask, this is just a, 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 couple, a couple of example questions. You can frame these dilemmas in your own organization's framework. And the great thing is, to actually deliver the questions, you don't need a lot of technology. You don't need uh, somebody to rate it. It can just be presented as a fairly straightforward question in an assessment management system, and yet you can get a lot of value out of it. So the kind of applications for situational judgment, uh, they're very widely used in pre-hire uh, for realistic job previews, working, we're looking at applicants, see if the job is what they want, and the employer work out what kind of uh, fit, fit, fit they are. Uh, but increasingly, they're being used in uh, post-hire. So in training, in terms of uh, giving assessment post-training, evaluation training effectiveness, uh, diagnosing training needs, and helping measure soft skills. And also in compliance, like I've just been talking about. So if you can assess the judgment of your workforce, you'd be much, much more likely to be able to spot problems, maybe s survey your organization, find out what they would do in these difficult situations, or what they think other people would do, and that can reduce risk. And the other area we're seeing traction on situational judgment is in certification. So many high-tech certification programs are criticized that they're focusing on basic knowledge, recall of facts, how to use the software perhaps, but not on the high-level skills that a consultant needs to be able to deploy the software effectively. And situational judgment assessments provide a practical and inexpensive way of testing judgment, and they're very, very interesting for certification use cases. 
in terms of constructing a, a, a situational judgment assessment, firstly, you define your competencies, what kind of things you're, you're looking, to, uh, looking to measure, otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. Then you survey your subject matter experts to identify situations, and this could well be real life dilemmas that people have faced in, in actuality. So some problem that somebody had a year ago, they weren't quite sure what to do, put it down as a, a situational judgment assessment, uh, ask a question about it, build a dilemma out of it. Then you develop your response options, ensure that they are uh, valid by getting a lot of experts to agree with them, also run item analysis to check it works right. And this can be a really very, very powerful way of assessing, assessing judgment and relatively inexpensive compared to other ways and certainly compared to mistakes in judgment. And you can uh, either have these as just select the most effective response or select the most effective and least effective, like I uh, showed um, uh, a moment ago. Or else you can have people rank options and uh, use multiple response. And these are pretty widely used in a lot of fields. Uh, the UK uh, uh, doctors, for example, will have to pass a situational judgment assessment before they, they get qualified. Uh, it's great for interpersonal skills, uh, making judgments against risks. And we've just yesterday uh, published a white paper on situational judgment written by myself and uh, uh, assessment advisor Eugene Burke. Uh, and this is available for free download on our website. Go to questionmark.com slash learning resources, or if you also go to our blog. Uh, it's a 40-page white paper. Gives an overview of these situational judgment assessments, benefits, techniques, and some example items. I really strongly recommend uh, situational judgment assessments to any of you who are looking for a way to evaluate judgment. Uh, they uh, need a little bit of discipline in how you author them, but relatively straightforward and, and easy to do, and uh, a fantastic solution to a lot of needs. So to summarize, uh, using questions that just test recall of knowledge has some value, but will often not test true job competence. And so it's worth ta writing questions, targeting a higher level of knowledge, understanding your application. If you do that, your testing program will improve. If you're testing practical skills or your jobs involve practical skills, then observational assessments can be very effective at measuring performance. And situational judgment assessments can be a great way to measure judgment and decision making. I hope that's been an interesting uh, journey through so, some ideas there. Uh, question mark, provide an assessment management system. Our stand is just next door here by some cleverness of our sales and marketing department. And uh, we allow collaborative, secure authoring, uh, blended delivery that works on lots of devices, and some great reports. So if you are interested in assessment management system, please come to us. But I hope the ideas I've shared to you will be useful to you in any case. Thank you. And if anybody has...